And we are on, it is day 20 of semen retention. And I'm going to get straight into it. I'm reading this book. It's on Hicks and Gracie. And it's funny how um, we get like, uh, what is it? Um, like, you know, things attract energy, attracts energy. Um, qu on that quantum physics level, whatever we are, we vibrate. I've picked up this book and I'm reading about it today. And his dad and his uncle, his dad's brother, they believed that I was reading today that they believed that... Um, you know, uh, sexual powers were only there for um, procreation. Hickson talks about it in this book. And he also talks about like his wild lifestyle of being in Rio de Janeiro, where I am right now. Um, he talks about how he, you know, slept around, um, was unfaithful to his wife, uh, did drugs. You know, I haven't got to the part yet, but I do know he's got a son who uh, overdosed of drugs at 18. This, 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 this lifestyle of adrenaline, this, you know, where you're playing with fire. I can relate to all of that, uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you know, um, it's, it's been a full life for me. The, the, the lemonade version of Hickson's, I mean, wow, what a story he's got. He's got a champagne story, that guy. Um, unbelievable, uh, a master in his field, achieved many great things and still achieving many great things. Um, and I look forward to getting to know him better from afar. Who knows, life's crazy. Maybe even uh, meeting him and getting to know a little bit better. Um, from up close and personal, um, you know, I, I am in Rio. I've got a daughter who lives here now. Um, and I have done things like that. Funnier things have happened to me from watching, you know, from being an actor, watching things like Emmerdale on the TV when I was a kid in Yorkshire to then going on Emmerdale, watching people like Mark Wahlberg on the TV to then going and working for Mark Wahlberg on a pilot. Um, the list goes on. So I'm not done, I've not done too bad myself, but, you know, I've got to be honest with myself. I've only scratched the surface because I've been... I've been messing around too much. We, it talks about it in here. Hickson talks about it, how young men get distracted. They got distracted. He saw people fall away who got too attached to drugs, who got too attached to women and the nightlife. Um, one minute he'd see these guys with the greatest looking girls in the club. Four days later, he'd see them walking down, um, you know, Copacabana, in the same outfit, spaced out, out of the mind still. Sometimes three months later, their body would be, fa be found in a ditch. Um, that's where it ends, unfortunately. That's where it ends with addiction and drugs and vices and sinful ways. It just is what it is. I mean, it's sinful ways. It's these things like faith, um, and different denominations, they have very similar teachings, you know. Stay away from that gluttonous, greedy behavior, whatever it's attached to food, uh, sex powers, um, earn your treats, you know, work hard. If there's anything I could tell anybody, and it's I tell, I tell my daughter, and I will tell anyone that I love, and I, I tell anyone that I, I don't love it either, because I'm telling you guys, I love anyone who's watching this, but what I'm saying to you, the person I care about most in the world is my daughter, and I would tell us the same thing that I would tell someone watching this who I don't even know that I have love for as a fellow human being. It's work harder than you're talented. Work harder. Have discipline, you know, sacrifice. And I'm telling myself this, as I'm saying it, I'm telling myself this. I'm having that accountability. Um, you know, I didn't want to do this video tonight. I'm exhausted. I'm physically drained, emotionally drained, jet lagged, been up and about since this morning. Um, I've been with my daughter all day and um, I'm coming off being ill. But, you know, uh, I, 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 I'm still doing, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to let my actions speak louder than my words. 
I'm trying to have the consistency. I think that's another thing I would tell anyone that I that I have love for. And that's just, yeah, I, I think that perhaps, I've said that God's fuel before, probably on here when I've been talking about sobriety and my journey and my spiritual awakening, God's fuel is the truth. But I think, you know, like when you're at the gas station and you can get fuel, there's always an option for super fuel. I think the super fuel would have like a, would have the extra ingredient along with truth would be consistency. Consistency. Because that that stuff compounds. Wow. You know, if you just keep showing up for yourself, doing anything. Um, the compounding effect. For instance, if you did something for the next 10 years for an hour a day, an hour a day for the next 10 years, you'd probably be a master at it on some level. You'd be like a, in the top percent of the world, right? So if you decided for the next 10 years, I'm going to um, play the piano for the next 10 years, an hour a day. What is that? 365 hours times 10 that's like nearly well 3650 hours so you're nearly 4000 hours of practice you'd be you'd be basically top 1% master you could do that if you're 20 years old watching this now and you by the time you're 30 you've got a talent that you could teach that you could use let's say jiu jitsu you could be top you'd probably be a purple or black belt most likely uh, let's say cooking, you'd be a master chef, you'd be a, a, a brilliant chef. Um, let's say speaking a language, you could speak another language. It's Consistency is unbelievable. You don't have to have talent if you've got consistency. I think that's what's, what's what I'm reading as well in this book. I think he speaks about that. Um, and he spoke about a lot of things. He spoke about a lot of things. And, and spiritually, there was something else. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this. A few days previous, I'd just been speaking on here about um, the saying memento mori. I'd spoke about how important it is to have a uh, consciousness with the fact that you're going to die. It's really important um, and it allows you to... I changed the screensaver on my phone to say uh, one day you will die, which was really good because you look at your phone so much through the day. I was seeing that and I'd be like, I'd be shocked at it. I'd be like, one day you're gonna, I forgot I'd put it on and I'm like, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> but it would really, at other times, I, there were times when I was like, that's a bit harsh in my head because it's the way I've programmed myself to think or maybe society thinks it's like, that's too much, that's a weakness. Like, I don't want to think about death. But then it got to a point like now where I look at it and I'm like, enjoy the moment, stay in the moment enjoy the moment that's what it means to me this thing's not forever enjoy it one day you'll take your last breath one day you'll take your last um whatever it is last everything you know your last dump on a toilet your last cup of tea it will be your last one day you never know when it will be so with that thought of like one day you will die life becomes really amazing one day I'll make my last video on here. I won't even know when it is. Could be this one. We don't know. Um, and that's what's amazing about life. And uh, he says this thing, if I can find it while I'm on it. I think it's 16. Is it here? It is. I underlined it. You can see it here. 69. Um, because he talks in this book I, I might even do a review of this book it's absolutely fantastic um, I'd, I'd read recently I'd read another book about um, rituals and um, the habits of ritual and how you can turn any text into like a uh, kind of um, religious text uh, somebody had done it with the Harry Potter books and created like a 1.4 million pod, uh, following on, pod, on a podcast you could do that with this book and this life. I think they're going to bring out a Netflix documentary on uh, Hicks and Gracie. And, um, you know, uh, they're going to... Uh, it'd be worth maybe doing a review on this book. I think it, I think it is worth... To, you know, there's so many life lessons in it. And this guy's lived a hell of a life. 
Um, but he says here, I eventually learned that the capacity to accept anything, especially death, was the key to my physical, mental, and spiritual growth. I eventually learned that the cap capacity to accept anything, especially death, was the key to my physical, mental, and spiritual growth. And I, I really get what he's saying there um, because there's so many people that live without wanting to talk about death, look at death, and I think he got that possibly from his son, but I think from what I've read so far, I'm three quarters of the way through the book. Um, so this is where I'm at so far with it. I think he got that from his first fight when he fought this uh, on the big stage. He talks about how he wanted to quit at the end of round one because he thought he was going to die. And he was like, I want to quit, Dad, throwing the towel. It said to his father, I want to throw in the towel, please. And his father and his brother, I forget which brother, uh, was there, Helio, his father and his brother, and they didn't let him. His father was like, no, you're doing fine, you're doing great, he's more tired than you. And his brother got a big ice bucket and threw it over his head. And he like woke him up and he went out in the second round and he stopped the other guy. And Hickson went on to win the next, apparently 450 fights that he ever had, he was undefeated as an adult. And, you know, I, I was thinking, wow, what happens if his dad and his brother had to let him quit? You know, in today's society where it's all like, okay, we want to respect what you're saying and don't force anyone to do anything they don't want to do. And that was the thought I had. But I also, what, what he says after that is when he, what he realized is when he went into battle, if he accepted that the worst thing that could happen was he was going to die, um, he was a different animal in the battle. He realized then he was just okay with it. Whatever happens, happens. I've accepted it. Let's dance. That kind of mentality. Um, and fear, fear was there, but he'd made peace with it. He'd made friends with it. There's other stories in it. There's so many. But yeah, it's amazing how this book has aligned with my journey. God is in my life. There's no doubt about it. I think God, I always said when I drank and, and drugged, I would turn the volume down on God. I would turn the volume down on my God conscious. If God was a wireless, if God was a speaker pumping out his message, when I drank, I personally feel, and I do feel as well, when anyone drinks, when anyone drugs, they turn down God. They probably turn up the, high, the darker powers, the darker forces in the world. And I'm just so glad I ain't, turn, I ain't turning God down these days. And I'm wide awake. I'm feeling my feelings. It's not always easy. I'm looking for better solutions than those quick fixes. Usually a quick fix is something you don't have to earn. It can be anything from sugar, Netflix, <laughs> you know, um, psychedelics, magic mushrooms, cigarettes, alcohol. Uh, there's other solutions, and like I said, usually you have to earn. You, it's something you have to earn. Go for a walk, go for a run, work out, read a book, learn, do a new skill, um, get involved in some kind of community, uh, go to church, meditate, swim. All these things, all these things. Um, cook, prepare a meal, sing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a it's been a good day. Day twenty's been a good day, and bloody hell, this has been a long one. Fourteen minutes. Who'd have thought it? Fourteen's me lucky number as well. But yeah, like I said, God's in my life. There's no doubt about it because people, places, and things they conspire. When you're taking good action, it's like it says, God God digs those people that take action. God helps those that help themselves. The universe will conspire to help you and guide you. It's amazing. Um, God's always there. You just have to set your sails. That wind is always there. You just have to adjust your sails. I've adjusted mine. I'm getting help adjusting them even more with Hicks and Gracie and his journey. I appreciate him. And I appreciate you for watching. If you're watching this, I love you. And I'm rooting for you. Um, when is now a good time to start doing the right thing? When is now a good time? You got it. 
Ok. Vá com Deus.